Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm now answering question number three from the January 2023 International A Level Statistics S1 paper question about discrete random variables. So, here we have a probability distribution for the discrete random variable x. And uh, what that means basically is the x stands for the possible outcomes of the experiment which are the numerical values 2, 3, and 4. We don't know what the experiment is, but these are the outcomes that can occur from this experiment. And these values, where it says the probability of x equals x, are the particular individual probabilities of those particular outcomes occurring. So the probability of 2 occurring is A, the probability of 3 occurring is 0 0.4, and the probability of 4 occurring is 0 0.6 minus A. Those are the probabilities of those random variables um, you know, those events occurring in this experiment. Now, A is a constant here, and it says find in terms of A, E, X. Now, E, X, what it stands for is the expected value of X or the mean of X, and that's simply found by multiplying the random variable by its probability. It's almost like a frequency table, right? So, 2 times A plus 3 times 0 0.4 plus 4 times 0 0.6 minus A. Okay, um, that is what we have to simplify, and that will be EX. So we have 2A plus 1.2 plus 2.4 minus 4A. So that gives us 2A minus 4A, which is minus 2A plus 3.6. So that is the expected value. If you want to write it in a more neat way, you can write EX equals... 3.6 take away 2a. So there's the answer to part a. Um, that's pretty straightforward. Then part b says find the range of possible values of ex. Okay, so the value of ex depends on the value of a, of course. Right? So we're going to find the range of possible values of ex. So let's think about the maximum and minimum value that a can possibly take in this situation. Now we know that the sum of all the probability values, okay, the sum of all the probabilities must equal one. If I add these together, it must always give us one. So let's think about the lowest value of A, the minimum value of A, such that these will equal one. So for example, if I know that A for sure is a probability, it cannot be less than zero. A cannot be less than zero. Right? Whatever value of A you get in here, you're going to get 1, by the way, because, um, you know, whatever A is here, okay, that's going to be 0 0.6 minus A, so the A will cancel out, you'll, have, you'll just be 0 0.4 plus 0 0.6, but we know that the probability can never be less than 1, okay, it can never be less than 1, right, so the minimum value of A is going to be 0, and the maximum value of A, we know that, um, again, you have here 0 0.6 minus A. The probability, this 0 0.6 minus A must always be greater than 0. Okay, that means A, its maximum value is 0 0.6. The maximum value of A must be 0 0.6. Okay, so that's, because if, if, if this becomes more than 0 0.6, for example, 0 0.61, this becomes a negative value probability, which makes no sense. There's no negative probability. The probability of something occurring, its least value is 0, and its maximum value is 1. Um, so this can never be um, negative, right? So therefore, the maximum value of A is 0 0.6. So we can, with that, we can work out the maximum value and the minimum value of EX. So the limits of EX, we can say the limits for EX, okay, are when A equals 0. That's one limit. So when A equals 0, EX is going to be, of course, 3.6. Okay, and the other limit of EX is when A is equal to 0 0.6. When A is 0 0.6, EX is equal to 3.6 minus 2 times 0 0.6. 3.6 minus 2 times 0 0.6, which is 3.6 minus 1.2, which is 2.4. So that means the range of values of EX are 
between um, 2.4, which is the lower limit here, and the higher limit is 3.6. Between those two values, e of x, okay, the, the the possible values of e x, right? So I mean, I'm guessing you could put equals two as well because it's possible for the probability of something to be zero, I guess. But as that is one of the, you know, um, you know, one of the, you know, um, outcomes, then it wouldn't be included if it's impossible. So that's why it's better to put, I think, greater than and less than instead of re writing equals. If you write equals, then it means the probability of this will be zero, and the probability of this will be zero for the other extreme, which doesn't really make sense, otherwise it wouldn't be included in the probability distribution really, right? So there's a probability for this, which means it's gonna be greater than zero, um, you know, and the same for this. So therefore, um, it's better not to put the equal sign, I think, but I think the mark scheme would um, overlook it if you put it there. So, you know, that's fine. I think it's better to put without the equal sign for that reason. So there's the answer to part B. And now for part C. It says, given that the variance of X is 0 0.56, find the possible values of A. Now, we, we just worked out E of X equals 3.6 minus 2A. That was from the first part of the question. We might need that. And we should know that the variance of something, variance of x is basically the mean of the squares minus the square of the mean. So it's basically e x inside the bracket squared. That's the mean of the squares minus, and then the square of e x, the square of the mean, the square of this. So that's what the variance of x is given by. So for us to find the variance of x, we need to know e x squared, which is found by taking the x value and squaring it for each of these, so that's 4, 9, and 16, and multiplying that by the probability of each of those outcomes. All right, so here we're going to have um, the variance of x, which is 0 0.56, is equal to ex squared, which is 4 times a, plus 9 times 0 0.4, plus 16 times 0 0.6 minus a, minus the square of the mean, which is the square of this value, which is the square of this bracket, 3.6 minus 2a, all squared. All right, so when we solve this equation, we should get our answer. Okay, we should get our answer. So 0 0.56 equals 4a plus 3.6 plus 16 times 0 0.6, that's going to be 60 plus 36, 9.6 minus 16a. Let me just make sure that that's correct in case I've made a, a silly mistake somewhere. So I've got uh, 16 times 0 0.6. That's going to be 9.6. That's correct. Minus 16a. And I'm going to square this inside a bracket so that I don't mess up there. So I have 3.6 all squared. Okay, so I'll do 3.6 squared. Gives me, um, as a decimal, better 12.96. Okay, so that's 12.96. Then I have minus, then I have these two multiplied and doubled. So that's 2 times 3.6a um, and times 2. So that's uh, 7.2 times 2, which is 14.4a. Again, let me make sure of that in case I've done something wrong. So I have 2 times 3.6 times 2. That gives me 14.4a, good, and plus 4a squared. Okay, so now let's continue. We have 0 0.56 equals 4a minus 16a, which is minus 12a. 3.6 plus 9.6, that's 12, plus 1.2, that's 13.2. Um, then you're going to have minus 12.96, minus, minus, plus 14.4a, minus times plus minus, that's minus 4a squared. Um, now we can try to simplify this. Uh, we looks like we're going to have a quadratic here. So minus 12a plus 40, so 14.4 minus 12 is 2.4, so I have 2.4a. 13.2 minus 12.96, let me just, 13.2. Minus 12.96, 13.2, 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 minus 
minus 12.96. That gives me 6 over 25, which is 0 0.24. Positive, so plus 0 0.24. Okay, and you have your minus 4a squared, of course. All right? So you've added these together, these together. Okay, good. So now we have a quadratic. I'm going to bring everything onto this side where the a squared term is positive. So I have 4a squared, and I have um, minus 2.4a. I have 0.56 minus 0.24. You're going to subtract them. That's going to give you 2 and 3. 2 and 3, 0 0.32. So you have plus 0 0.32 is equal to 0. Now, to solve this equation, I can either use the quadratic formula, or I could try to factorize if possible. Now, if I saw this in an exam, I would assume, by the way it looks, it's going to be a bit difficult to factorize, all right? And I would go straight for trying to use the quadratic formula, to be honest, although I think in the end you can factorize it. But if you go for the quadratic formula, it's absolutely fine. But what you should not do is just go to your calculator and use the equation function and just write down A equals and A equals and write the two answers down. You will definitely lose a mark, as is mentioned very clearly in the mark scheme. There's a method mark for using the quadratic formula or factorizing and also mentioned very clearly in the examiner's report. So please don't throw away marks. Show a method of solving quadratic equations. So here I'm going to use the quadratic formula, which we know as x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Where a, b, and c, um, the a doesn't, of course, refer to this a here. It refers to the coefficient of the squared term. All right, so that's going to be a. That's the coefficient of the non-squared term, and that's the coefficient of the constant. So that's your a, b, and c. So if we use the formula, a would be here our answer, because that's the, uh, the variable here, is equal to minus b, so it's minus minus 2.4 plus or minus the square root of b squared which is minus 2.4 all squared minus 4 times a which is 4 again times c which is 0 0.32 and all of this has to be over all of this has to be over 2a so now we can find the solutions to this so what we're going to do here is we're going to put uh, minus, so we'll put our uh, fraction straight away, so minus, minus, that's plus, so I'll just write that as 2.4, plus, I'll start with the plus part, plus the square root of b squared, well, that's going to be become squared anyway, so it'll be positive, so 2.4 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 4, times c, which is 0 0.32, okay, um, and divide that by 2 times a, which is 2 times 4, which is 8. Okay, 2 times 4, which is 8. All right, and that gives us 2 fifths. So that should be 2 times 4. Okay, 2 times 4. So that gives me 2 fifths. That's one value of A. And the other value of A is found by simply going back and changing this minus to a plus. So we go back to that part. Change that to a plus. Delete and put a minus. And put equals, and that's 1 fifth. So obviously we could have factorized this if we wanted to, because the answers come up with this, you know, non-rational, um, sorry, in this sorry rational form. So therefore we could have factorized this. We could have, um, you know, got rid of the decimal points and then uh, simplified and then tried to factorize. But I think that's too much hassle. There's no problem. You get the marks for this, and that's perfectly fine. And there's the answer to part C of this question, and that concludes. This particular um, question, um, other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region over here. Other questions from S1 in general, um, this topic, sorry, in general, discrete random variables can be found in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and you can use the video that will appear, the link for the video appear over here, which tells you how to use the channel to answer other questions um, or look at other topics that you might want to look at. Thank you for watching and see you soon.